This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Ungovernable. Quote, The internal difference of blackness is a violent and cruel rerouting, by way and outside of critique, that is predicated on the notion that there is nothing wrong with us. Precisely, insofar as there is something wrong, something off, something ungovernably, fugitively living in us that is constantly taken for the pathogen it instantiates. End quote. Fred Moten and Stefano Harney's Blackness and Governance. It is misguided to presume that an anarchic world, a world in which for classical anarchists the state is eliminated, or a world in which for black queer feminist anarchists racial capitalism and cis heteronormative patriarchy is overturned, is the end quote unquote, of anarchist pursuits. Anarcho blackness, with its disruptive, disorderly conduct, its mode of conducting itself as, in other words, disorderly, advances a critical praxis that answers the fundamental political question what is to be done? Well, kind of. The question, what is to be done, demands an answer, not that the texture, tenor, or terms of that answer can be readily discerned, nor does admitting this ex exculpate us from needing to, nevertheless, provide an answer. So again, what is to be done? Indeed, accosted by right-wing populism, virulent white supremacy, trans antagonism, heteronormative patriarchy, and the litany of other violent regimes in our midst. We so earnestly want them to cease. We demand that it all end now and for justifiable reasons. I, though, animated by anarchism's critical praxis, its practice of criticality, do not place my crosshairs on a moment beyond now when things might come to a close. This is not motivated by a nihilistic pessimism about the fate of the current political moment where I cannot fathom cessation or even mitigation of various violences. This is not motivated by a perverse infatuation with the bounding persistence of hegemonic terrors. It is motivated by a kind of zeal, in fact, where one... Well, one where refusing an end allows for a perpetual openness that enables always the possibility of another beginning. Black anarchism's emphasis on the constituti constitutivity of concepts of critical and praxis is fundamental here, as it itself is constituted through an indebtedness to black queer and trans feminisms. This project is deeply theoretical, but also practical and material, because there is nothing more theoretically practical than trying to figure out how to fundamentally change the very system and by, by which we live. Indeed, to quote Zoe Samudzi, quote, what does it mean to create a community that is safe for black women, for black trans women? That is an incredibly theoretical exercise because that requires that we have all of these conversations and start to create material politics around misogynoir and trans misogynoir, end quote. So the critical praxis and its theoretical heft is a ruthless interrogation of established and institutionalized in the vein of Marx's 1843 call for uh, the ruthless criticism of all that exists, um, and if praxis is a doing in a gentle enactment that bears on sociality, then a critical praxis marks an interrogative social enactment. What kind of politics might this lead to? What kind of world might this engender? And who might show up to this promiscuous gathering? The space cultivated by this critical praxis is where a black anarchic politics and those subjective subjectivated by an anarcho-blackness, its attendant black queer feminist electrical circuitry show up. Those maroons, subversive intellectuals, fugitive, fugitives, queers, feminists, anarchists, and rebellious workers meet to conspire together in the undercommons, a non-place where everyone is black, queer, anarchic, because they are changed by the undercommons, which is not a place you enter, but a groove that enters you. Ooh. The critical praxis becomes a radical invitation to not only do but but to be done by the undercommon insurgency that makes its own demands. And such an interrogation must suspend the presumption of an end goal. We know from Moton and Hartney, Harney and Jack Halberstam that what we think we want before the crisis that persists persist, 
app precipitates our insurgency won't necessarily shift after we've attained the limits of what our coalitional knowledge could compile. It is not because we are insufficient, as if insufficiency is a deficiency rather than a willingness to risk getting at the outer limits of what we dared to think. It is, be- it is because we cannot and must not assume that the logistics and rubrics we have when moving within the maelstrom of the hegemonic, uh, radically altered as they may be, can operate to our benefit when we've unseated the hegemon. We will need new rubrics and metrics, unrubrics and unmetrics, because a radically other world requires a radically other means to love it, to caress it, to be all the way in it. So why is there no end? To assert this might seem to sidestep what Foucault claims in the preface of Anti-Oedipus to be, quote, less concerned with why this or that than with how to proceed, end quote. Refusing to bank on the quote-unquote end is, at least in part, how to proceed. Quote, an abdication of political responsibility, Martin uh, Moten and Har- Harney Wright anticipating the accusation. Okay, whatever. We're just anti-politically romantic about actually existing social life, end quote. I submit that one's concern must be an ethical one, that to, that to supplement an oversight in Moten and Harney not only sets its sights on social life that actually, and I shiver at the hubris of this word, exists, but more substantially fertilizes the conditions for possibility for otherwise an unsung and unknown emergence. There is no quote-unquote end because to know the end is to think one knows the totality of the landscape, a line of thinking that cannot account for that which falls outside the, the dictates of legibility. There might always be something else just outside, and we cannot close the discussion when we think it is over. Fugitive planning plans for what it cannot plan for by refusing to plan for it. So there is no end in sight because the sight is not the only sense available to us. Uh, But there is also no end in touch, smell, feel, or taste, or any other quote-unquote sense. There is no end in sight because our end may only be someone else's beginning or middle. Thus, our critical praxis, our interrogative social enactment, does something precisely when it commits to a political endeavor proliferating life where where no life is said to be found. And the quote-unquote where of Life where there is no life to be found is a place brought about by abolition. Abolition is fundamentally anarchic, as will be discussed at greater length in the final chapter. It is the eradication of a society that could have prisons, that could have slavery, that could have the wage, and therefore not abolition as the elimination of anything but abolition as the founding of a new society. This entails, to put it simply, the eradication of society in as much as quote-unquote society is predicated on and constituted by the existence of these things. Anarchism is the ground on which we assert the destitution of the terrain, a destitution that marks according to the invisible committee, quote, a rapture in the fatality that condemns revolutions to reproduce what they have driven out, shattering the iron cage of counter-revolution, end quote. Following this line of thinking, we might also say that destitution is another name for the position of blackness, that irreparable disturbance, destituting the world as is, the blackening of the world shifts what counts as the real terrain of politics. To be ungoverned is a quotidian practice or way of life in the space and the space in which that practice is lived is a space of anarchy. Not nihilism or chaos, but life by other means. Anarcho life. What black anarchists seek to do is to found a new society, not necessarily by bringing about the destruction of a myriad of edifices of terror, violence, circumscription, and normativity, but by cultivating the spaces and, and places that, by dint of their existence, instantiate the impossibility of the normative bastions that now surround us. We might call this justice. We might call this a non-utopic utopia, a sanctuary. We might call it the undercommons. 
how then to do this? Upon a rereading of the undercommons, I was drawn obsessively to one phrase that struck me at first as dangerously wrongheaded, but then the revolutionary will always be dangerous. The revolutionary call that Moton and Harney require and that I have been obsessed with is this. They insist that our radical politics, our anarchic world building must be unconditional. The door swings open for refuge, even though it may let in police agents and destruction. As my grandmother might quip, what kind of foolishness is this? But it is not foolishness precisely because the only ethical call that could bring about the radical revolutionary overturning we seek is one that does not discriminate or develop criteria for inclusion and consequently exclusion. If the door swings open without a bouncer checking names, it means that whoever shows up will be let in unconditionally without conditions. The ethical demand here is to be monstrously inclusive, a lesson learned in the black radical tradition, black feminisms, and trans activism. Yes, the law might send agents to infiltrate our conspiratorial sessions, or even worse, as has happened, our enemy might show up and sit with us in prayer before gunning us down. But at the same time, a salvational figure might show up or better yet a fugitive might show up asking us to provide her refuge and a safe harbor and we must let her in this is what is to be done we must feed and shelter her because this fugitive any fugitive might be the one we didn't know we were doing all this insurgent conspiratorial work for answering what is to be done carries a deeply ethical val valence the manner by which things get done and the result of the doing inflex to whom we owe allegiances, who or who is or is not on our minds, and most fundamentally, for whom we wish to see the world changed. The doing we seek is committed to making a world for people we don't yet know, people who might need a drastically different world, while understanding that even our idea of worldness might be predicated on the logics of normative regimes that limit our horizons. It is imperative, then, to commit to the work without presuming to know who the work is for, only committing to the work because it might allow for those we did not know existed to finally live. When we volunteer at the soup kitchens, we must turn no one away, even and especially when they look like they just ate a hearty bowl of soup, or when we are faced with imminent violence, we must refuse to prol proliferate violence because we've come into a being come into being via a violation and this bestows upon us the ethical commitment to mitigate that violence when we hear a knock at the door and someone asking for help because they are being chased we must let them in again the door swings open each entity that crosses the threshold is another possible signatory on our missives for the anti-politics of dissent to take praxis seriously a praxis that is at its never-ending, the proliferation of non-normative life and the livelihood of the unemerged is to risk what we ultimately come to. We cannot be afraid of what we find in our critical praxis precisely because if it commits to the aforementioned, it will indeed be scary and impossible to prepare for. That is the work of the monstrous, a liberatory, unanticipated salvation that troubling interrogation of gender Susan Stryker finds in the trans, the divine portent that Dorita find, would argue is unannounceable, which is to say untamable, unable to be absorbed into existing logics, that claimable fingliness that Hortense Spillers says might, quote, rewrite after all a radically different text, end quote. A critical praxis in the undercommons, insurgent work being done by folks who were let in without the paperwork and without vouchers because they, despite where they came from, got down to work for the revolution, is work for monsters, is monstrous work. In the end, what I am asking for is assemblic work for those who are impoverished in spirit, who come together in intimate proximity reached because we are doing work, not because of an ontologized accident. What I am, what I am asking for is a willingness to come forward, becoming subjectivated by an analytical queerness, a radical transitivity, a radical transitivity in, in an original blackness where blackness names a socio-poetic force of subversive irregularity and, as Moton expressed to me in an email exchange, 
must be claimed by any and every body who seeks to do anarchic work. What is being asked for, what is to be done, is a blackening that inducts all those who live and be in the undercommons, stealing life so it can steal more life, pilfering resources and asking no permission, taking no responsibility, because the ones who need this stuff might not know they need it, and neither do we. But if we must hack into government security systems and disseminate the firewalled information, that is what is to be done. If we must lie about the destination of finding we are given, allocating it to an unauthorized and unadvised and undisclosed locations, that is what is to be done. If we must sully ourselves by hanging around a bad crowd that is bad only because the goods of violent optics and ethics deem it so, then that is what is to be done. So because the queer is a figurative specter haunting normativity and because the trans is a generative disruption that opens into an otherwise realm of possibility and because the black is a lawlessness that marks a terrain of ethics because law ain't ever been ethical only disciplinary that is what is to be done it is a becoming in the illustrious muck of queerness the transness the blackness of the undercommons if fugitive planning and black study is an invitation to be and remain broken to refuse fixedness and fixity and being fixed, then to conclude this meditative strain, what is to be done is precisely the kind of study practice in consciousness raising coalitions by black feminists and anarcho feminists. Instead of getting discouraged and isolated now, we should be in our small groups discussing, planning, creating, and making trouble. We should always be actively engaging in and creating feminist activity because we all thrive on it. Fugitive planning and black study, planning with and for fugitives, studying the effects of blackness. To be ungoverned is, yes, uh, disorderly. Many castigate this yearning, uh, assert the utility and indeed value of order. But the order they speak of and the order the ungoverned reject is the order of present society, a society ordered by virtue of its violent quelling of all those deemed disorderly. But ours is an order that arises by way of ungoverned disorder, an order that is more accurately a harmony, a beautiful ensemble swarm that supplants the order of the state. That is what ungovernance strives for. It is an ungovernability that characterizes life and livability, motivating this urge to not be governed quite so much pushing this famous Foucaultian Foucaultian dictum beyond his reluctance to embrace a negatively connotated anarchism is an insistence on the livability of ungovernance propelled in this pursuit by an an origin an originary drive that by its negating an Oh my god, okay. Propelled in this pursuit by an an or originary drive that by negating its an rejects hierarchization that originary would imply. An anarcho blackness promotes what Moten and Harney deem the runaway anarchic ground of unpayable debt and untold wealth. And this, they conclude, is blackness which must be understood in its ontological difference from black people who are, nevertheless, underprivileged insofar as they are given to an understanding of it. We return obliquely to the opening definitional claim of anarcho-blackness, this understanding of blackness and what the prefix anarcho signifies is a blackness that implies not only f- only or merely an epidermal saturation, but a driving force that provides a certain kind of subversive disposition. Ungoverned by physical or biological logics, it is the general sensoria we might call blackness that arises from a radical aesthetic tradition, one that cares less about the assertion of an identity as its heft and more about the breakdown of impositions of racialization. Racialization understood as the child and not the parent of racism. Gleaning this blackness from the black radical tradition is an anarchic, ungoverned disorder, an anarchy of radicalism that must oppose the form as well as the content of racial hate. 
This is anarcho-blackness. It, cre- it emerges through a political subjectivity that lays the groundwork for the, runway, the runaways and renegades, the, its apostates and defectors who refuse to pay debts and in that anarchic refusal possess an untold wealth because metrics for quantifying this wealth are not beholden to the logics of the financial sector. There is a dovetailing here with traditional anarchist claims to reject all forms of external government and the state, but also a rejection of governance, a distinction that tears the texture of sociality and encompasses affective, emotional, interpersonal relationships on the intersubjective level that are not quite captured in the larger institutions of government and the state. Advancing an anti-capitalist mode of thinking and interaction, not simply one that is anti-classist requires a radical break from the capitalist relations a world system dependent on racial slavery violence colonialism genocide and gendered labor a system that is propelled by exploitative racialized and gendered labor practices which have always been part and parcel of white european economies a system whose ethic is one of non-ethics rebuking sentient life's need and desires and well-being in favor of a lethal combination of economic policies and cultural practices that collectively benefit hoarders of wealth to the detriment of poor people and poor folks of color, a system of privatizing public services and functions and market functions, ah, a system of privatizing public services and functions, marketization and commodification of social life. In short, as DJ Quick once put it, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Learn then from Diogenes, Diogenes the cynic, whom Kropotkin touts as an anarchist of the ancient world and, a defa- and deface the currency. One might also note, though, that those anarchists Square co- scare quotes because it would be dubious to claim anarchism and doubly bracketed here in an M dash as well as parentheses because I resent having to give airtime to such ideologies who take their cryptocurrency and rush to South America to not be governed and instead instantiate regimes of state claiming and unencumbered accumulation of capital are in fact merely capitalists. They are Juan Swanson-esque libertarians who reject all forms of being told what to do with their lives and their property and venerate unbridled capitalism and the free market because of a disdain for regulation. Such conditions are always highly regulated, however. Locks and chains are on the doors, and the door person locks you up, looks you up and down before turning you away because you called out the management on their privatizing, commodifying, tyrannical bullshit. An anarchist disdain for governance, if I may be permitted to dip or to slip into a conflation with government for a moment, is predicated on an understanding of it as Pierre Joseph Proudhon described it. To be governed is to be watched over, inspected, spied on, directed, legislated, regimented, closed in, indoctrinated, preached at, controlled, assessed, evaluated, censored, commanded, all by creatures that have neither the right nor the wisdom nor the virtue. To be governed means that at every move, operation, or transaction, one is noted, registered, entered in a census, taxed, stamped, priced, assessed, patented, licensed, authorized, recommended, admonished, prevented, reformed, set right, corrected. Then, at the first sign of resistance or word of compliant word of complaint, one is repressed, fine, despised, vexed, pursued, hustled, beaten up, garroted, imprisoned, shot, machine gunned, judged, sentenced, deported, sacrificed, sold, betrayed, and to cap it all, ridiculed, mocked, outraged, and dishonored. This is the government. That, it's ju- that is its justice and its morality. Those who are surveilled with the most scrutiny are black, non-normatively gendered, and femme, and thus to seek the liberation of those who live through the nexuses requires a promotion of a black anarchic governance. 
the insurgent sla- the insurgent history of slave uprisings, wayward movements of 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 racial and gender passing, and illicit sexualities is a swerve away from being regulated and registered. They are the people who do not have papers, but traverse to colonized territories in search of land they could live with. They are not the people who they are not they are the people who did not change their licenses and birth certificates, not caring about judicial and legal mandates to align with perinatal impositions, driving and traveling and getting stolen resources away. They are the people who do not care for biological dictates of kinship sold to them for tax purposes and instead insisted on the closeness of cousins on aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and sibs, despite having no real quote-unquote ties to them. They resisted these regimes because they knew that when they did, they would be despised, vexed, pursued, hustled, beaten up, garroted, imprisoned, but understood that to be positioned this way in proximity to criminality meant that they were doing something because indeed collective resistance and revolution occurs at the scene of the crime itself. To be ungoverned is not to oppose governance. To be ungoverned is to operate beyond governance, to become disaffected by it, not even acknowledging its legitimacy, being, in other words, ungoverned by governance. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.